Welcome everybody. Today we have a very special layout tour video for you. We are visiting Mr. Bob Yerke and his Bose scale high rail layout, which is a rendition of the Pennsylvania Railroad's Renovo division for whom his father worked for. Now, this layout is in a 1500 square foot room that uh, Bob custom built above his garage just for the layout. It's a beautiful layout, and as we finish up our quick little uh, aerial tour here, what we're going to do, we're going to go back, we're going to start at one end of the layout, Bob's going to give us a walking tour and explain some of the highlights of the layout along the way. We will then go back and take a couple trains around the layout, uh, follow some trains to, to see them run through the gorgeous scenery. Uh, this is really cool, O-gauge, big, hefty, it's awesome. It's a lot different than what I'm used to in HO scale, but sit back, enjoy. This is going to be a great tour. You're going to love it. Let's go enjoy Bob's PRR Renovo Division. All right, to get us grounded, here's a schematic of Bob's layout. What we're going to do, we're going to start in the east Lackawanna yard. See the yard, the refinery, the port. We're going to move around. We'll see the engine facility. Move into north Renovo and then go through Renovo. Continue along the main line. We'll go through Leesburg, Bonita Junction, Reynoldsville, and then eventually get wrap up and be back in Wilson. And then we'll stop and take some other views around the layout. We'll look at some of the structures. We'll look at some of his awesome detailing. And like I said, they're going to run a train, and have some fun. So, all right, here we go. Sit back and enjoy, everybody. Uh, we're looking at the uh, East Lackawanna Yard. Uh, this is the northern end of my layout that feeds into the. Uh, city of East Lackawanna, which is behind us. Um, I use this as a stub yard, basically, for car storage uh, and a little bit of classification. And then up in here, all the, this yard is double-ended, so this is essentially my classification yard, um, where we, I have two switch engines that I use uh, in, uh, in uh, East Lackawanna yard. I have an 060 and a 080. And of course, this is the Pennsylvania Railroad, so most of the motor power you see on the road will be Pennsylvania power. We do lease a couple of other engines from the Bessemer and the Lehigh Valley, but we'll see those later on. And this, Bob, the, uh, the old GE here, this is a uh, Erie? Well, is that, or just th this area originally on the layout, I use this area depending on which way you came in. This was Lackawanna if you came in from this end, and if you came in through the tunnel and up the other way, this was Erie, Pennsylvania. So it was kind of a, I kind of used mm. the same spot in the layout for the dual purpose mm -hmm. location depending on how I wanted to run the railroad. But I kind of done away with the Erie thing, but however the GE plant was there first, so I didn't want to move right. it. <laughs> and that, that's very close to my old homestead growing up. I just lived about a half a mile south of the GE plant in yep. Erie, Pennsylvania. But that's my rendition of the, of the GE plant. Uh, Erie Valley Iron was another real company, so that, that gives me a spot to to bring in scrap iron and iron ore and, and the coke and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's really neat. Okay. Okay, and then there's a little side branch off the yard area. We go into the uh, it's really an industrial area that that, uh, uh, that the main uh, the main industry is a hooker chemical company uh, with a couple of other uh, we have Morris and Doors and uh, an H and H feed and supply up north. But this is a little branch industrial area that comes off and then attached to that is a little residential business district. That's really cool. Do the drone view here. <laughs> all of these buildings on this peninsula are the are all woodland scenics buildings and I just love them. Wood yeah, they are nice. They yeah, are. yeah. One of the reasons I built it on a peninsula is because I didn't want to hide the backside or so much detail on all four sides of the building. This was the one way I could display the buildings and have them all um, have them all be able to be seen from all, all four sides. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, 
So here's a track level view of the Hooker Chemical Company. That was a bear to build, but that was probably one of my... Doesn't look like much now, but that was, they don't give you any other than just some drawings of a bunch of scrap parts. I mean, it isn't a typical kit. Okay. Uh, very, very little, very, very little detail. Basically just a set of engineering drawings. And, and have fun. And have fun. <laughs> I mean, a lot of those are very, challenge, very challenging. Yeah, it looks good though. It looks very, very good. I actually built it on a uh, on a lift out, on a half inch plywood lift out. There's knockoff holes underneath that I can punch that out. Oh, okay. Yep. If I ever have to move this, this whole section will come out, and I don't have to disassemble it. It needed, it needed to be it needed to be kept together. Yep. So that is removable fairly easily. Okay. Coming into the coming into the yard entrance, actually, or yard exit, uh, the yard switchers a lot of times will back a back a train out of the yard onto the main line, which is to your left. Uh, that is a short industrial spur back there that gets Federson Transfer Investment Bakery Products, and there's a transfer house there. Uh, we'll, we'll go drone again here. <laughs> Nesmith is a dear friend of mine. The gal is an absolute excellent baker, so I had to name an industry after mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice. So this down here, I'm just going to point here. This is kind of the yard lead here. Yep, that's that the comes out of, out of the, out of the that's, yard. Actually, yep. that tower right in front of you, Rob, I yep. call that OD tower. That's my OD. OD, okay, yep. yeah. That's my OD, yep. so that's my outer depot. All right. Yep. And then uh, the switch to your immediate left, the, you're, you're out into the main line. So those, okay, so that's those, right here. Uh, those steam switchers from the yard will back a train out onto the main line. And then the main line engine is usually over in the engine area that we'll get to later. Yep. And we'll bring a main line engine over, hook onto the train, and, and away they go, depending on... So they'll, they'll back them out. They'll back it out. Into and here. It, and then it goes, it goes back yep. to the right. It goes around the bend to the right. Okay, yep. And then in the distance, you're looking at the, the city of East Lackawanna. And right in the foreground there, I guess I'll call that Fairview, New York. <laughs> yeah, I like that station. We're going to be... Uh... You'll see the station there is named on the end. Fairview? Yep. There we go. That area there, Rob, is a little branch. That is the harbor area of Lackawanna. That's okay. Lake Erie. There you go. Right now we have a uh, we have a tanker in there that's uh, we're bringing in some, uh, or I guess we're we're, we're exporting some uh, <laughs> diesel oil. Go about yeah, there. that's a beautiful look. That's cool. Are these kits, or do you, I mean, where do you get ships like this? Actually, actually, those <laughs> were model PT boats that I found at a hobby shop. Yeah. And took them and then cannibalized them. Okay. Them yeah. So you kit bashed them basically. Yeah. yeah. I also made it so I can change these. This lifts off, so I want to, if I want to put something else and make that a different type of a freighter, I can put containers down there or something. Oh, yeah, so okay. Yep. Right now, I just yep. had this configured as a tanker. Uh, and yeah. that, one, that one over there I have configured as an iron ore carrier. I mean, they're really way too <laughs> small for O-scale, but you have to make some compromises. How big would an O-scale boat would probably be it, as big as... It would be eight feet long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's Did beautiful. You know that? No, I didn't. That's a uh, that's I think that's a Lionel model. Okay. And that unfortunately, is really cool. they, that came out first, and I got it, and then later on they came out with the Pennsylvania version, Pennsylvania uh, Pennsylvania Railroad mm -hmm. version, and uh, but uh, but that's okay. So <laughs> I interline up here. Part of the Lackawanna yard is where the New York Central comes in too. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can see some New York Central stuff around in a couple inches. Yep. So that's my logic for having uh, having it serviced by the New York and the Pepsi really comes into the New York and East Lackawanna. 
price that they have. This one right here? Yep, that's a Menards. Menards. Yeah. Menards as in like the store, right? Yeah, Menards is in the store. The guy, huh. the, the guy that owns the big model railroad started oh, selling oh, really? railroad supplies recently. Okay, and I did not know. Yeah. He's track and he supplies cars and he had, yeah, I have probably six or seven of his buildings and they're all very nice. Very nice. That looks so cool. That is really, that's a nice building. Yeah. And they're all interior lit too, you see a little plug here. And I have a little, and I, by the way, remind me to do that. Oh I yeah, to breathe yeah. Show all the lights and light it up. Oh yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. For the nighttime scene, so I mean, I've got several, hundred, uh, hundred probably about a hundred buildings that are lit, so quite a few lights are in the way. That's kind of neat, because it actually looks like it's a pipe or, yeah, yeah, it's or not, you know, I mean, something coming in to feed not, the building. It's not ideal. You know? I, it would have been nice to do it underneath some way, but yeah, I can always cover that with a bunch of, Oh yeah, yeah. Yep. Looks cool. Yep. This is the main engine facility here. This is beautiful. So Bob, it's mostly Pensy and New York Central is the mostly. Yeah. Mostly, I see some nickel plate stuff. We'll get some video of over here. But. Only one. There's only like one of everything else. I think there's three or four New York Central on the layout. Bangor, Roostek, a Lehigh Valley, and a. Yeah. You must be a fan of nickel plates. That's part of your. Uh, that's part of your email address. The seven sixty five yep. or something. Yeah. Yep. This is the sister engine seven sixty three by the way. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, I think it is. I, I can't. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know they have yeah. an HO. Somebody, somebody was saying that they do that in HO. Mm -hmm. in BTS. Yeah, I've seen it in HO. Yeah. I think yep. that kit. Yep. The guy told me. Right. There was, a, there was an O-scale guy helping this guy's wife value everything. And I think he said the kit was like over 300 bucks. Just to get up the O-scale kit. I'm surprised it's not more than that. Maybe more than that. I think the AHO is like 350 or something. Well, maybe it was more than that, but it was, it was quite a bit. So. The main line, you see it kind of comes out of the yard back around here on the other side of the peninsula there. It comes around the back, and then we're going to continue on toward Renovo. Hey Rob. Yes, sir. Before you leave this area, you may want to grab that. This is the passenger area. Oh, absolutely! I forgot. Oh my God! Yeah. How did I walk past this, that? This, this is all part of East. This is all yep. part of East Lackawanna. It's the passenger terminal, and it's also the express tracks. A lot of express stuff comes in. Yep. These two tracks I basically use as uh, express tracks. Now, if you can imagine from up around the bend there in the corner to down to here is about 45 miles. Sounds uh, good. Yeah. Sounds good. In O-Gage, yep, the, yep. This is the 45-mile stretch in here coming, <laughs> out of, coming out of East Lackawanna gotcha. to get down into the, the, yeah, the, yeah. To, to the outskirts of North Renova. And North Renova <laughs> has a big power plant, a big power complex. I want to re-letter this that I, I, I wanted to do the uh, West Penn Power, which is a big power company in western Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this whole for this is also a Menards building, so I need to redo that. That was their power plant. Oh, look at the yeah, I like that. Yeah. It, had a, it had a big 16 cylinder, 12 cylinder diesel generator inside. Yeah. And uh, and then this this was also a Menards building, American Power and Light. So essentially, this is all coal fired uh, power plant complex here. Nice. Let me get it into Renovo itself. Come up this way. Well, we're still in the North Renovo. North Renovo, yeah. okay. But it borders Renovo. We're getting, we're getting there. Mm -hmm. In North Renovo, we have Herman sauerkraut and we have uh, the Hickory Grove meat plant. Oh, there we go. Yeah. 
you obviously always find uh, uh, stock cars coming and going on these two tracks, out of, out of the meat plant tracks. This company here, this is Thompson Maple Products. They use the high quality North Central Pennsylvania ash and maple, <laughs> white, white ash and that. That's very unique to this part of the country. So Thompson Maple Products brings in uh, brings in lumber and passes it out. I wanted to do a nice sawmill thing, but you know, just kind of run out of room to do stuff. Now we're coming into the main Renova yard, the main engine facilities yard in, yard in Renova, Pennsylvania. Incidentally, that brick up on the wall is a real brick from the Renova roundhouse when it was destroyed. There you go. Yeah. Station. Okay. Station. Like that. Yeah, that's a Rico. Yeah, a Rico station. Not a lot of industry in Renova, but we have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of engines coming and going, and we do a lot of crew changing in Renova. This is the halfway point between Lackawanna and uh, Wilson, West Virginia. A city in Iowa, and I've forgotten the name of it right now. In Iowa, really? Yep. Okay. And, and all of the all of the backdrops up in Lackawanna that we saw earlier, those are Memphis, Tennessee. Really? And they had a, the one <laughs> image at the one end had a, a Holiday Inn Express that I had to cut out. So, but basically, I got the images off the internet. I put them on a paint program on my computer, and you can enlarge them X to Y, and I like it being a little uh, opaque, when you, know, when you blow it up you lose clarity, mm -hmm. but I, I like that effect because it was supposed to be in the background anyway, so I got them at the right, about the right size for O scale and took that disc into Office Max and they printed all the images off on their big heavy duty, like 100, 110 pound paper, and then that paper was just uh, glued onto a phone core board. And of course I cut the, I cut the, horse, I cut the sky in that all out with a sharp razor knife. But it made a real nice background. That is really and, uh, nice. It yeah. Adds to it. Beautiful. I wanted to add yeah. a little depth to it, so that's why I put that grass area and that's that short uh, stone wall in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of these images were just images that I found off uh, found off the internet and blew them up to the right size. Most of them are kind of designed more for O scale size, but you can blow them up and and then print any size you want. Hmm. Looks great. And it's just a, a good, real nice blend from the four. It's really, really well done. There you are leaving the uh, Renova area, and then you're going through some mountainous regions. And again, we're covering another 25 or 30 miles, and we'll pop out. <laughs> we'll pop out coming into Leesburg on the other, on the other side. side. Okay, yeah. That's yeah, nice. That's a nice. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually the Domino Sugar Plant in uh, New Orleans. If you look closely, you'll see a couple of palm trees on there. <laughs> People wonder what a lot of the palm trees Oh, I see them. I do see them. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, hard that nobody ever notices the we'll palm We'll see if the trees, viewers can catch them. We'll see if they notice it. Was, uh, <laughs> I believe that was, uh, I believe that's down in Louisiana somewhere, Domino Sugar Plant. I really like it. I'm not sure where this General Mills thing came from. do it this scene. This is the track that goes from Renova to Leesburg. So we come out. Yeah, we right come out here. of that tunnel. Yep. And then eventually we're going to come back into, into, uh, into Benita Junction, but mm -hmm. I don't. I don't really consider this. This is one scene. This is something else. Gotcha. So yep. That yep. track there. In my, when I'm operating, we're, we're coming out of. Uh, uh, we are coming out of Renova for about 25 or 30 miles, and we come mm -hmm. into the outskirts of Leesburg, Pennsylvania. Leesburg's claim the fame as biggest industry is Columbia Oil, the big oil distributor. Uh -huh. Pennsylvania yep. Oil. It has a heavy equipment distributor, it has a little brewery, it has a granary, a, a feed mill, grain mills, we get uh, hopper cars come and go out of the granary, and, uh, and then a manufacturing plant I haven't really named yet. Uh, it's a, just a sleepy little town, Leesburg, Pennsylvania. Okay.
Very nice. So that, Bob, that comes out. Let me come around. Let yeah, me come around, around here. here. And then, right and then around you're, here. you're yep. back to Benita Junction. Gotcha. Yeah. We'll come back around this way here. Yep. But embedded in here is a Y and a reverse loop. So if you're changing engines or turning, or else if you just want to come to Leesburg and you're going back to East Lackawanna again, mm -hmm. you can terminate here and go back again. Gotcha. If you continue on, you stay. Incidentally, the, the gray ballast is essentially the main line. It kind of helps identify a little bit. And some of the secondary tracks, if you use dark ballast or, or dirt. And the dirt, okay, use, yeah. yeah. Some of the new yep. sidings, I did that in real dirt. Okay. So you have about 150 pounds of ballast on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> I used, oh, well, I used three five gallon pails of ballast from, from uh, Scenic <laughs> Express. I believe it. And then yeah. I bought about another 10 gallon jugs of one from one of our members that I've been going through. So you use a lot. You use a lot more than you do in HO, I know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. PA, but this track here used to go uphill and into there, but I, I changed the layout around. Now this this is a little branch line that just goes to a little sleepy bird so that's called, right Ralston, here. called yep. Ralston Corners. Okay, so we go over Actually, here. This scene over here, uh -huh. Ralston, yep. Ralston Corners is the lower level. Ralston Corners, Pennsylvania is a little branch line that comes off Leesburg. The factory up above is a branch line that comes off Lackawanna. That's what I call South Buffalo. Okay. Mm -hmm. so those are two separate scenes. Alright, so when we leave over here, we actually come around back through that scene, then it goes back under through Bonita Junction, and we come out here. And then do a quick pan over here. We go back into this tunnel and continue on. And then we come out in another tunnel. Let me go over there and get that quick. So let me continue on here. Yep. Our next stop is Reynoldsville. Just it's Reynoldsville is just represented by a small country station, passenger station. We actually come back out here then, correct? You're entering this track right here. Right this one, here. Just, keep, just yeah. keep on this one right On this here. one right here, gotcha. Right around and up yep. the hill. That's the line from Benita Junction up to, we're heading, we're heading towards Wilson, the end of the line, but we have a stop in, in Reynoldsville. Okay, oh, I see, okay, yep. So now we come up, yep, okay, I'll show them okay. coming around here. Through Reynoldsville, got now, it. Reynoldsville is kind of unique because it has a short line, uh, old Pennsylvania short line that comes in and that short line runs on to, on to Tyrone and a couple of other stops. Uh, but uh, you see the short line tracks come in and dead end at the station. So people can take a short line passenger train and then jump on the Pennsylvania main line and eventually make their way to New York, Chicago, or St. Louis. There you go. Yeah. This was actually some narrow gauge stuff that I tried to put in the layout as a working track. I couldn't figure out how to do it, and I like the looks of it, so I wanted to bring it out and get it on my leg. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This, this was this was a nice little thing to get it out on display where you can see it. Yep, nice. And, uh, and the station down at Westfield, New York, is exactly what this is. The New York Central tracks are in the front of the station at Westfield, and then these, the dead-ended tracks came in, and they come up to Chautauqua Lake. That was the old trolley line in the oh, okay. Jamestown and uh -huh. James, no, Jamestown and Northwest or something, I think they called it. Uh, there was a real railroad that ran from Jamestown down to West. Okay, Virginia. so then we continue yeah, up. Yeah, you're going to continue up the hill? Up the hill? Yep. And we go back in the back Actually, side. Then you go over a concrete viaduct and you come into yep. Thunder Bridge. There we go. Named after the thunder that rolls over the back side of the hill, so that was nicknamed Thunder Bridge. Okay. Just to the right of the bridge, you have the uh, you have the entrance to the north side siding. North siding is on uh, the north side of uh, Nittany Mountain, Pennsylvania. Right now, we have some uh, hopper cars sitting on that siding. And around the mountain, you're looking at through the little valley there. You're yeah, coming here. into uh, you're going to be coming into Nittany Mountain, Pennsylvania. Did you paint the background yourself? Yeah. Nice. 
I did everything up here called food building, including building the room. <laughs> this used to be a one-story building. Where I put the food on, but the up here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That was a challenge. I mean, I built the original building too. And I, I was smart about building two stories in the beginning. So. Right, so we come to the cut we saw before. Oh, yeah. so come through here. here. Yeah, yes. Yeah, well, I've done a lot of HL. I've got tons of HL equipment storage. I had some big layouts on the thing I want to go after. Not, not as big as this, but I've had some fairly substantial HL layouts. And I've never really lost my life for those being a long back when I finally was a kid. And then we're really going to have GH came up with a great sound system, the slow moving hand motors. So, Bob, we're now, what's up here? Uh, basically, that bridge there that the uh, state of Maine cars are on, that's the state line. So, once you cross there, uh, you are into Wilson, West Virginia. And that uh, Bessemer, that orange and black Bessemer engine, we, we, the Pensy leases that, and that's our switch engine up in, up in Wilson. Okay. So it comes up and comes around the end of the peninsula here. Yeah. Loops around this is, here. Yeah, this is the term. This is the terminal of the uh, Pennsy Railroad. So it loops around and goes back again. Okay. Yeah. Kind of what's unique about Wilson and Nittany Mountain is that track that has the state of Maine cars on it. Mm -hmm. That is the B and O interchange. So the, that's where the B and O comes into the Pennsy at Wilson, West Virginia. And if you go around to your right. Where those hop coal hopper cars are. Yep. That is the Norfolk and Western Interchange track. There you go. Coming into Nitton Mountain. So when the Pensy comes south of this area, we bring a lot of trains down and inter interchange with the B and O and the and the yep. Norfolk and Western. Cool. That's pretty much the end. Well, not the end, but that's where then you start heading back toward. Like a wana. Yeah, right? this is yep. this is my yeah, this is the yep. terminal. This is the very southern end of the layout, Wilson, yep. West Virginia. Okay. And that's that switch right there between Morton Salt and the switch tower there, that's the reverse loop track basically. Okay, right yeah. here. Yep. Yep. So as you kind of loop around and comes back around, it'll throw switch number three automatically. You familiar with these non derailing switches all? Yeah. All it really is is this you just take a section of track here and you isolate it and you isolate this, and this track is wired into the ground of each of each side of the coil. So if the switch is this way and you're coming in as soon as the as soon as the train wheels hit this the one rail's grounded all the time, this is insulated. So all you're really doing is you're just completing the ground through the through mm -hmm. the engine of your locomotive. Okay. And then you're you're it's just it's just when and when I hit a button for that switch, I'm really connecting the ground into the coil. So when the train comes by and hits that, you're hitting the ground, you're connecting the ground into the coil, you're throwing it. So if it's if it's mm. what I call I my old convention is green is straight and red is curved. You know, this is the red mode, this is the green mode, it's the old vinyl days. Mm -hmm. uh, there's red and green lights here. So if the train is coming in in this direction, it'll hit that and it'll throw it automatically. So almost every switch on the layout is automatic and it's all wired for that. I only have about maybe six or eight manual switches and they tend to be in the yard area. And this really, this really helps because you, you, you cut your button pushing by 50%. Mm -hmm. The only time you have to push a button is if you're coming into it, you know, from the, from the facing, facing point of the switch. I have. I have the line of command system. I don't like it because you have to hold with one hand and turn the knob with the other. Mm -hmm. What I like about the MTH is all a one-hand operation, mm -hmm. which allows this handy to print copy or switch cars yeah. and do other yeah. things. I think that's a really big, big plus of MTH is having a one-hand operation. Mm -hmm. You could do your whistle, direction, throttle, everything with just the thumb and one hand. So. Can you run all gauge with digit tracks? Can you run all gauge with digit tracks? I guess you just get a bigger, yeah, bigger system. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, if you had two rail, really two rail O scale, the control is all the same. It's all DC power and the mm -hmm. track. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think the Randy, uh, our two rail guy, was going to go as one of the command system, one of those. Okay. I, would, I would think you could, yeah. The AC is nice, though. The AC is a lot more forgiving in terms of dirty track. I only really think. This is actually a load of coke coming out of East Lackawanna. 
and it is going to end up in Richmond, Virginia at the Predator Ironworks. And this train will eventually bring the load of West Virginia coal back to Lackawanna to be converted into coal. Magically, they're the same parts. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of unit trains that run the layout down to down to down to Nittany Mountain and Wilson pick up drop hole strings of cars and pick up whole trains and go Okay, back. yeah. Yeah. Not that one. Not that one. Yeah, give me that one red.
transfer that to the real world. I used to, this, this is actually in the loop if I want to run it continuously, but actually the, the p and interchange over there just wraps around and becomes the only mountain interchange. So I never really, I never really run a train back there. I essentially use these two tracks as, you know, it's funny how you
They call it. They call that. Uh, pro, uh, they call that uh, passenger and freight sound. And then what the and then your freight does a similar thing, but it'll stop and it'll say, you know, now approaching a yard or something, and you know, you'll hear you'll hear a banging and clatter that you hear on a freight yard rather than passenger terminal. That's got a. And I'm going to demo the smoke on that too. The steam engine smoke is really kind of cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the diesel would smoke like that, too, if I refilled the, the uh, fluid. Well, a little different than the Lionel trains we had as we were kids. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> These are really impressive. and all that stuff off. You can mute out the sound. Sure. So what are 
really surfy surfy. Yeah, I got you from Chicago, man. He used to come up to the Institute, which is up the road here in the Clinton Stock Institution, and visit every summer. And he heard on the way out to the local hobby shop, came to visit the man, and said, he said, why don't you let me take some pictures? And I'll submit it to the magazine. And I said, you want to do that? That's fine. Took some pictures. Did he work for the magazine? No, he, he was a guy. <laughs> he worked. He actually volunteers for the Illinois Railroad Museum in mm -hmm. Union, Illinois. Thank you.
Thank you.